Jesse Stay of geekgreens.com. Uh, today, we've got some really cool things here. Uh, we got this stuff from Amazon just recently. So um, uh, we have uh, three new plants that we're gonna plant in today's episode. The first one here, which is a little dirty because I just got it wet in uh, things. This right here is a fig tree right here. This will grow a little tiny fix here. And um, this fig tree is unique in that it is built to grow all the way down to zone six, which is where I live here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, so that means that this ought to survive the winter here and continue producing figs. We'll see what it does and we're gonna give it a try. But, uh, but here we have a fig tree. I'll, I'll include the link down below uh, as to where you can uh, get this. The second little plant I've got here, uh, I have a fascination lately with banana trees. Uh, before we planted the uh, Musa Basju, Musa Basju. Um, well, this is a variety of Musa uh, called the ice cream banana tree. Uh, and it's named ice cream for a reason. This is supposed to be one of the coldest and hardiest, uh, cold hardiest, if that's a word, uh, plants, uh, banana trees on the on out there. And this actually, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if that Musa Basu, the banana tree, will uh, produce bananas. It will grow and it will survive winter, but I'm not sure if it will produce bananas. This right here is supposed to produce bananas all the way in zone six. And uh, there, uh, in my research, uh, there are people in New Jersey that were producing bananas with this thing, and that's the same zone I'm in here in Salt Lake City, Utah. So. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to work. We're going to we're going to give it a try. We'll compare this against our my Musa Basu, uh, and we'll see how they do. I'm going to put this around my pond uh, garden here. And um, the third plant that I've got here, this right here is a Russian pomegranate bush. I want to say tree, but it's actually a. Uh, oh, get out of my way here. Guy wants to fall over. Okay, so um, this right here is a Russian. Wants to. There we go. Just put it right there. Here, you can just sit right here. There you go. Okay, so here's a, a Russian pomegranate. Here, got this. Um, got this off of either Amazon or eBay. I'll, I'll put the link down below. Uh, so you can. This also grows pomegranates, full-size pomegranates, all the way down into zone six, and produces a beautiful, beautiful, big bush. Uh, I could use it as a hedge, I think, if I really wanted to. Um, and uh, and uh, makes really big, very large pomegranates all the way down uh, into the negative 10 degree, negative 15 degree. I think it's about negative 10 degree is the minimum uh, cold temperature you can get to for zone six. So um, so this ought to survive that, and it ought to survive the winters, and it ought to grow pomegranates. We're gonna see what it does, and we'll grow it, and I'll provide status updates uh, as we go along. So we're gonna plant these three plants here. Again, you can get the links down below in the uh, in the description. Uh, let's 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 get this a try. So let's let's get going. Okay, so we have our fig tree here, our cold hardy fig tree. We're gonna plant this right here in front of the pond. Um, uh, I don't think these get too tall, but they'll get a little bit tall and, and ought to provide some nice decoration around the pond. So, uh, so let's let's go ahead and plant this. Okay, so we've got our fig tree here, and I've dug a little hole about as deep as the plant and about twice as, as round. Uh, uh, the goal is we want to surround it with good dirt and good soil around this entire area. Um, so what we want to do here is uh, we want to mix our soil here. So we're going to take some of the regular soil that was in here. We're going to mix it in here. Take some compost. Mix it in here and kind of just mix all that up. I've got a little bit of room down there. Watch the spider. And uh, a little more compost down there. Um, the other thing uh, I've got here is some sand because the fig tree likes uh, likes uh, uh, like soil that uh, drains really easily. So uh, got a little bit of sand in here that we're gonna mix in with that. Um, a little bit more sand in. Um, and uh, then we want some azomite in here. 
is these are trace minerals that um, provide uh, more than just the typical uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, uh, uh, and uh, uh, and the, the typical fertilizer that you're going to get. Uh, uh, these will provide a lot more, so your plants will be even more healthy. Um, so we got the azomite in there. Now I'm going to take some uh, worm castings, which uh, next next week we're going to do going to do a little uh, episode on uh, my worms. And there's actually some little worms in here that, uh, that will just go in and aerate the soil for me. Um, we like worms. Worms are good. And um, just kind of mix all that in. We got a really nice. I'm going to put a little more of that stuff in. Really nice, uh, healthy soil in here. It's uh, the, the sand really gets in there and, and that'll drain really easily. So, got a little bit down there. Now we want to empty our, our uh, fig tree here. Empty that completely. Dry. Now take your roots very lightly. You don't want to disturb any of the roots. Very lightly, just kind of take that and then you want to lie them just kind of flat along here so that uh, the roots will be allowed to grow in there and, uh, and then just kind of take all the soil that we put together and put it around the roots keep the leaves up high the leaves don't really like to get too wet take that and let's let's mix some more soil in I'm going to take some of my normal soil over here, spread some of that in. This is really rocky soil, which actually is good for the fig tree because it uh, likes that aerated soil, but I um, don't want too many rocks in there, so, so I'm trying to keep the bigger ones out at least. So, mix that in. Let's take some of our compost. More of that in. And the sand. Make sure that he's giving at least a little bit of room in there. We've got a little bit of room to throw there, so let's, let's fill that in some more. I'm just taking all my compost and my sand and just mixing it all together in here. Got about an equal parts of, uh, well, probably equal parts of the regular dirt and regular sand, and maybe about twice that the compost. And when I say parts, I mean the uh, same amount is what the parts mean. And I don't want to push it down too much. I kind of did that there, which you really don't want. You want to keep it nice aerated ground here. Uh, and some more sand. Just mix all of that in there. Traditionally I could probably mix this in ahead of time. That would be a little more equal, but I'm not picky. <laughs> regular dirt there. Okay, and um, just make sure that it's in there. And then what I'm going to do, let me put a little bit more of the, the worm castings in here. A little bit more azomite around the outside here. And that stuff will all just gradually slow release into the soil there and uh, now what I want to do is I want to create a little puddle line here that uh, water can make its way into so that it's not it's not all going into the middle and suffocating the plant so I want just around the outside here to be a nice little indentation that the water's going to go. Let me just make sure that these leaves are all off of that. I can going to remove this one here. And uh, that's basically 
everything. So now let's water it. Just water right inside the, the puddle line and that'll all... sink in. You want to water it nice and deep so it's especially in the heat you want down below around the roots to all be very moist and stay moist in the top to dry out and that will keep it nice and moist inside in these hot days of summer. And this right here is my compost tea. Again I'll talk about this next week make this from worm castings or worm poop basically and I just pour water through worm poop and it uh, uh, fills in here. So, And that's basically it. What I would probably do next is if you've got some leaves or some sort of mulch, I would put that around here to protect the plant. Um, and that will also attract worms and help aerate the soil. So I'd probably fill this in with some leaves next and uh, that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to go around the yard and and uh, find some leaves that I can just cover this up with and that'll help keep the soil cool and help protect it in the heat and also bring worms into the ground to, to further aerate the soil. So let's go on to our next plant. Okay here we have our very healthy ice cream banana plant. Um, we're going to take this and we're going to plant it right here next to our pond. The, the, the Musa Basu uh, one is uh, on the other side of the pond and if both grow to full height we should have some pretty banana trees accenting our pond here. Um, so so I'm going to take this and we're going to plant the ground and uh, and then all we have to do is observe and see uh, which grows better. So let's go. Okay so we've got our banana plant here and I've dug a hole here um, bigger than the, the, the width of the, the, the tree and uh, now this I don't have a mix of sand like our last one. Uh, it's just a mix of compost here. Got my azomite here and over here I've got my worm castings uh, and then a finish of uh, worm compost tea. Uh, and then uh, the original soil is all here. So I probably want about an equal amount of the original soil and uh, the compost. In fact I'd lean a little more compost than the original soil. You can see we got a, a little bit of rocks here. Um, and if I put it in here, I want it about up here, so I need to fill it in a little bit first. So let's just take a little of the original soil and kind of just drop that in there. Take about equal amounts of the compost, mix that in there. And I'm going to put this over here. We've got uh, our worm compost here that I'm going to just kind of sprinkle in there. Some azomite in there. And just kind of mix all that stuff together. Take out the rocks if you can. Got some worms in there. We like the worms. And that should be good. So if I put that in there, that's about right height there. Now if I pull this out just gradually, I don't want to disturb the roots in there. And let's just stick our stick in there to give it some support. And I want to kind of spread out the roots here very carefully. You don't want to disturb your roots, just kind of kind of tickle it down at the bottom here and and then you just want to kind of flatten it so the roots are flat on the ground right here and now we want to fill it in I'm going to take my compost like I said I want a little bit more compost than where you would dirt so I'm okay if it leans heavy compost Organic matter is always good. And I'm hoping these things don't suffocate it. I'm going to have to, this is, uh, I'm going to have to keep that uh, trimmed back just to keep it away from the banana plant. Take some original soil and some that all over there.
got together here without disturbing the plant too much. Let's give me some more compost in here. Pretty good mixer. I think this is good. And now let's put in our worm compost here. a mite. I'll sprinkle that on there. Okay, now got my compost tea. Oh, let's uh, let's go ahead and make it easy for the water to run around the plant. So, give it a little bit of an indentation here. So push all the water in there, hopefully. And now I just water it. I'm just going to water that nice and generously so it's nice and deep. That'll all seep right into the, with the roots. And that's it. So that is our ice cream banana tree. Okay, the last plant we're going to put in our garden is my Russian pomegranate tree. I'm really excited about this one. This is it's actually not a tree. It's, a, it's more of a bush. It's a hedge uh, that uh, will grow and grow really large pomegranates. Um, so this one we're putting near the, uh, the pond. I'm putting it on the outside of the pond. The fig tree is on the other side of the pond. And my two uh, uh, banana trees are inside uh, the pond area. And they ought to all provide a really nice accent of these really exotic trees and bushes all around the pond. That's my hope. So we'll have a really beautiful area that uh, produces some really neat uh, uh, plants and trees and fruit and stuff like that. So, uh, so let's get the, let's get started and plant this in the ground. Okay, so the process of planting this is going to be a lot like the others. I actually have the the soil here isn't doesn't drain here as well. I I filled this with water to kind of moisten it up a little, and it's still got water in the bottom. That's fine. We're gonna we're gonna fill most of this with the uh, with the uh, supplemental uh, soil anyway so um, but we really want kind of just an equivalent amount of the previous soil and compost maybe a little more compost so I'm just going to fill that a little bit with the soil in there actually got some compost over here just fill that up with some compost and let's put our let's uh, put some azomite in here and uh, maybe a little more. And um, then our worm castings. Now let's just uh, pull this out here. Try not to disturb it too much, although this is really loose for me. Um, let's see if we can keep it. But uh, as long as you're not disturbing the roots, that's what matters. Um, I'm just going to have to just leave it like that. And now, let's put some more of the original dirt in on top here. Just mix that in there. And the rest I'm going to fill in with compost and other good stuff. And this compost here went down to our local dump, basically, and uh, it's actually pretty good quality where we're at. You want to find out how it is where you're at, because sometimes it's not as good quality as others. Um, but uh, it's uh, costing me about 20 bucks for uh, for a ton of uh, compost to fill up my, my truck bed uh, 
uh, it's actually a really good deal. You might want to look in your area and um, and uh, make sure, see if there's a, a cheap option for you and compost there. Um, that is really wet soil. Um, it'll dry up. We're here in Utah. It's really dry, so this will dry up really quick. I'm gonna some more azomite around there. Mix that in. Rest. Some more compost in. I actually prefer compost over the regular soil, so if you have too much compost, I don't think, unless, unless you're worried about aeration, which in this case is not going really to be too bad, um, you, want, uh, you want a good, uh, and compost is always going to be good, organic matter, you can never go wrong with. One more, maybe one more scoop here. Two, this and two scoops. Two scoops of raisins. Okay. Um, and just, I wouldn't pat it too far. Just kind of let the roots will settle in on their own. So you don't want to prevent the roots from going. But you do want it to make our little watering canal. Whatever you want to call it here. All the water where you want it to go, and again, we'll probably cover this with leaves or some sort of mulch uh, to keep it cool, especially in the dead of summer like this. I really want this to start thriving before it starts cooling down, so that uh, it'll survive the winter. Um, and uh, basically. Put some more azomite on top. Like I said, you never have too much azomite. Make sure. Let's just finish off the vermicompost there. And now we got our compost tea. Let's just get it just nice and watered, which it ought to have to bench the water down the bottom. It ought to be pretty deep already, but let's. Nice and wet. And that ought to hold this really well. I'm going to cover it with leaves after this. And here we've got our Russian pomegranate bush slash hedge or whatever you want it to be. And this is actually a more grow and be, oh, it can be about 10 to 11 or 12 feet high and you can produce a really beautiful bush full of really big pomegranates. So right here in Salt Lake City, Utah, that's what's cool about it. So here we go. This is the Russian pomegranate. We covered the fig, the Russian pomegranate, and the ice cream banana tree. We'll watch how these grow as they go and we'll compare them. Uh, but, uh, but here's the start and we'll see how they do. I'm Jesse Stay. This is geekgreens.com. Welcome to geekgreens.com, where you can find all things geeky in terms of plants and fruits and vegetables and planting worms and insects and you name it, I've got it all here. Thanks for coming here and please spend some time here to view the to view my shows, view what whatever I've got here. Um, I've got a ton of different episodes on on anywhere from planting parasitic wasps to, to planting banana trees all the way up in Salt Lake City, Utah. Please come and uh, check out my videos. Like and subscribe if you like it and comment down below if you want to see something that you're not seeing here. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for uh, participating on my channel.